the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. The exhortation, go get them, Raiders. And Oakland is doing just that to Cincinnati. 4.09 left in the first quarter. The Raiders leading 3 to nothing. LaMonica throwing to Raymond Chester, the brilliant tight end from Morgan State. Quickly it becomes Oakland 10, Cincinnati nothing. What an athlete Raymond Chester is. Just a second-year man already, one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. Now, you're watching Kenny Anderson. We're in the third quarter. It's Oakland 17, Cincinnati nothing. The short pitch to Essex Johnson, as you saw. Essex bursting downfield with his great speed and shiftiness, and it becomes 17-7 to Oakland. We're still in the third quarter. It's now 17-10. to Horst Muehlman has kicked a field goal. Watch Kenny Anderson, the rookie quarterback from Augustana. He gets in. He's in for the touchdown, and it's a brand-new ball game. Oakland 17, Cincinnati 17. This is fourth quarter action. Nine minutes remaining, and the game has been entrusted to Father Time. George Bland. He throws to Marv Hubbard, number 44. The young man from Colgate goes in for the touchdown. Oakland reassumes command, 24 to 17 over Cincinnati. It's still, of course, the fourth quarter, 7.25 remaining. Watch Kenny Anderson. He's rolling left. He is going to flip a four-yard pass to Speedy Thomas. And the Bengals have tied it up again, 24 to 24. It seems that annually, favored Oakland has trouble with Cincinnati. But watch, again, three minutes remaining. And now, incredibly, Flander has done it again. He has pitched to Clarence Davis, who goes on that sweep for 27 yards. Oakland at the moment is trailing Cincinnati by three, believe it or not. There's the handoff to Mob Hubbard. Hubbard's in for the score. Oakland 31, Cincinnati 27. Oh, I never thought I'd see this scene. Nick Scorich and Lou Saban, the respective coaches of Cleveland and Denver, an old feud between the two teams and a surprising day for Cleveland, heavily favored. Watch this punt by Denver. This is action late in the game that will give you a perspective on the game. Leroy Kelly, number 44, with a brilliant return. Notice the way he loped down that right sideline, a little bit in the fashion of Jimmy Brown in his prime. Finally downed after a 74-yard jaunt to the Denver 8. Cleveland was penalized back to the 25. And the purpose of all of that was to show you that that was Cleveland's longest penetration of the day. Because here, you see second quarter action as Bobby Anderson ran in six yards for a touchdown to give Denver a 14-0 lead over hapless and futile Cleveland. Here's Cleveland, still in the second quarter, trailing 14-0. Bill Nelson. Pitching a pass, picked off by Forsberg, the linebacker, and he will run unmolested for the touchdown. Virtually unmolested, one missed tackle, and then a veritable push in by a Cleveland defender. Denver leads 21 to nothing. Jim Turner adds two field goals, 27 to nothing, in a tremendous upset, Denver over Cleveland. Tiger Stadium, Detroit, Michigan, the Lions coming out onto the field to face the Chicago Bears in a game that was ultimately to produce the terrible tragedy of Chuck Hughes. This is first quarter action. The Bears trailing three to nothing, but Don Shy taking the handoff from South Park quarterback Bobby Douglas bursting 21 yards for the touchdown, and the Bears lead it seven to three. No thought at this time of what was to occur later. Second quarter action, 13-15 remaining. Chicago leading 7-6. Bobby Douglas throwing long to George Farmer. Farmer taking the ball and going in all by himself. The Bears now leading 14-6 over the Lions. This margin was short-lived. This is the very next kickoff. Mac Percival kicking off for the Bears. The ball taken by Ron Jessup. And can this youngster go? He broke one earlier this year that you viewers will remember from our halftime highlight show. Moving down the left sideline now with excellent downfield blocking. Jesse pours on the speed. He goes 102 yards for the touchdown. And quickly the score is lessened to 14 to 13 in favor of Chicago. We are still in the second quarter. Now Detroit is leading 20 to 14. The South Bar again, Bobby Douglas. His coach moved in with him to prepare him for this game, and it seems to have worked. The quick touchdown popper to Bob Wallace, and Chicago leads 21 to 20 over Detroit. 
This is the last play of the third quarter. Detroit has reassumed the lead, 23 to 21. Greg Landry, the Detroit quarterback, drops back. You must watch this play closely. The ball is tipped by Doug Buffone, tipped away. Intercepted by Jimmy Gunn. Now watch this. Lateraled to Charlie Ford. Stumbles over a fallen now defending Lion. Picks up very little additional yardage. But the scene is set for fourth quarter action. And with only four minutes and four seconds gone, Bobby Douglas keeps it, goes in for the score. The Bears win 28-23. But the whole game washed away because of the loss of Chuck Hughes. The Kansas City Chiefs. Municipal Stadium, Kansas City. The big game of Sunday. The Redskins. The surprise team in football. There's no score at this point. Lenny Dawson passing. The ball intercepted by Pat Fisher. The diminutive defensive man of the Redskins. Watch Pat go all the way down to the Kansas City four. On the very next play, Bill Kilmer, a tremendous surprise this year. Playing superbly well, flips for the touchdown to Charlie Taylor. Washington 7, Kansas City nothing. We pick up the action with the score now, 10 to 6, Washington. And you saw that ball pop up. Charlie Taylor grab it again. And this young man was once a running back, as you know, a simply superb football player. Washington springs to a 17-6 lead. Dawson is trying to come back. The score now is 20-13. We're in the fourth quarter. Dawson hitting Elmo Wright, the speedster from the University of Houston, and the Kansas City Chiefs are on their way. This is just three plays later. Dawson again. Back. The pass blocking fine, as you can see. The pitch. And it's Elmo Wright for the touchdown, the jig of delight, and suddenly it's 20 to 20. We have only 3.59 remaining in the game. Lenny Dawson again. What a year Len has had. Who else but Otis Taylor, number 89 from Prairie View, AM with a brilliant one hand catch, and the Kansas City Chiefs have beaten the Redskins 27 to 20. The first Redskin loss of the year, but George Allen's men have proved they're for real.